2023 was just a glimpse into the future. ChatGPT stunned the world. But 2024, it's a revolution. From NVIDIA's groundbreaking chips to Google's quantum leap, AI is no longer a buzzword, it's an everyday reality. If you're considering to join BTEC CSC or any of its specializations in 2025, this video will help you see the glimpse into the future of technology and make informed decisions about your academic career. What laptop or PC are you eyeing next? The sleek MacBook with M4 Max or a PC beast with an Intel Core i9 and Nvidia GTX 40 series GPU. Think that's powerful? Guess what? These chips are nothing compared to the ones that power supercomputers. And these are used to build and run AI models like ChatGPT, Gemini, etc. And OpenAI used 10,000 NVIDIA's 100 GPUs to build the ChatGPT. And imagine, this is 20,000 times more powerful than your dream gaming PC. And these powerful supercomputers handle millions of users like you, yet answer complex questions in just seconds. But this is just the past. OpenAI, Google and other tech companies continue to build new and powerful models like the Sora, VO2, etc. To improve these and handle even more users, these companies require even more powerful chips. And this is where NVIDIA's latest and most powerful chip yet, the Blackwell, comes in. Announced this year, this chip is multiple times more powerful than its predecessor. This chip is already in huge demand and this is gonna power OpenAI, Google and even India's own cloud computing company, Shakti Cloud, very soon. We can definitely expect more and more powerful AI models which work in real time, real quick and make quicker decisions. And this can revolutionize many industries like the self-driving car industry for instance and even more. Now, to build more and more of these AI models and integrate them into existing products, companies need a lot more computer science engineers and electronics engineers. Noland Arbaugh, a 30-year-old man in the US, met with an accident around a decade ago. He got paralyzed. Let's hear his worries. I accepted that I was paralyzed and that that was my life. I always held out hope that it would all get better. From the time of your injury until earlier this year, what was your daily life like? I mean, one thing about being paralyzed is that there's a lot of time to sit and think. And so I thought through basically my whole life and realized all the mistakes I'd made and what I could do better. But his life completely changed when he got his Neuralink chip implant. One day, one of my buddies from college uh, called me up um, we talked pretty regularly and he was like, hey, Neuralink, they opened up the human trials. Um, and I said, what's Neuralink? Neuralink, co-founded by Elon Musk, is an experimental implantable brain computer interface or BCI, a chip surgically implanted by a robot and connected by threads to a patient's brain that allows the patient to control a computer or smartphone with their mind. Hey, this is all from there to there. Yeah, man. <laughs> wow. Neuralink is not the only company working on this technology. Several others are also testing their BCIs in paralyzed volunteers. Noland now joins that small group as Neuralink's first patient. I was just very happy that I would be a part of something that I believe is so monumental in this next step forward of helping people with paralysis. What can you do now with the chip implanted that you could not do prior? Um, I can control a computer just like anyone else can, which is not something I was able to do beforehand. You just played some music? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> That's awesome. Imagine playing a video game using only your mind. Engineers trained a monkey called Pager to do exactly that. Let's see how that went. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. He's learned to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Pager's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Pager's intended hand movements in real time. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we are wirelessly streaming in real time the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. 
After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. It seems to have gone well, but there's a problem. Thinking generates massive data and transmitting it wirelessly is a huge challenge. To tackle this, Neuralink announced the Neuralink Compression Challenge. Participants can download one hour of raw brain recordings from Pager playing Mind Pong. The task? Compress the data 200 times without losing any information. Bonus points for optimizing latency and power efficiency. Think you've got a solution? Submit it directly to Neuralink using the link in the description. What does this challenge mean to you as an engineering aspirant? This means that even the world's best do not have all the answers. Whatever you have learned in the past is not sufficient to create the future. This is where problem solving skills become very crucial. So no matter which branch of engineering you choose, keep focus on building your problem solving skills. They are the ultimate key to success in your tech career. We all know that the Nobel Prize is one of the most prestigious awards in the world. Throughout history, physicists and chemists like Albert Einstein, J.J. Thomson, Marie Curie and Chandrasekhar have received it for their marvelous breakthroughs. But in 2024, everything changed. The Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, a computer scientist recognized for his groundbreaking work that powers machine learning and artificial neural networks. This is the foundation for each and every AI model such as ChatGPT, Gemini, etc. And the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2024 was awarded for developing an AI model to solve a 50-year-old problem predicting proteins' complex structures. This breakthrough can accelerate the development of more effective drugs and vaccines. But what does this mean for you as an engineering aspirant? Computer science isn't just about creating apps on the phone and the laptop. It has already expanded into multiple fields like even healthcare, and it is making rapid breakthroughs in all these fields. And the opportunity? It is huge for those who are willing to innovate and solve problems. Let's take your computer. The chip inside contains billions of transistors acting like tiny switches that turn on and off based on a binary code, the language of ones and zeros. Even the NVIDIA Blackwell chip contains over 200 billion transistors and that works in the same way. A transistor is either on or off. There is no in-between. But quantum chips, they break this limit. In quantum computing, a switch can be both on and off at the same time, unlocking a whole new dimension of possibilities. This allows quantum computers to perform multiple calculations simultaneously, potentially solving problems which were too complex for classical computers. But then, making quantum computers to work on scale has a problem. It is like trying to build a skyscraper with blocks that crumble easily. The bigger you build, the more likely it is to collapse. Google's Willow chip changes exactly that. This groundbreaking chip improves quantum error correction, making quantum systems more reliable and scalable. It is like building that skyscraper with stronger and sturdier blocks. This breakthrough could solve problems that even the most powerful supercomputers can't tackle today. For example, problems that take 10 septillion years to solve. Yes, that's a real number, one followed by 25 zeros on the world's most powerful computers are solved in just five minutes with the Willow. Scientists and engineers believe that this can solve all of the universe's unsolved problems, even the ones we haven't imagined yet. That's a great thing, right? It is, but it also has a dark side to it. The World Economic Forum says that this could be a threat to cybersecurity because if hackers and bad actors get access to this kind of computing power, they could break into most of today's security systems. To tackle these attacks, top companies like Apple have developed post-quantum cryptographic protocols that tackle attacks in the future and other companies are developing their own security measures. So in the future, the world would need many more cyber security experts. Let's now step into the future with Meta's latest augmented reality glasses, the real Tony Stark tech. Impressive, right? But that's not all. Can this technology go beyond and meet emotional needs like social bonding? Let's find out. My parents don't live anywhere close to me. Mm -hmm. I video call them a lot. And when I think about the progress of technology like this, in a timeline from like the telegram to the telephone to video call to some feeling of presence with another person who mm -hmm. feels like they're right there in front of me. Yeah. That makes me feel incredibly optimistic. I mm -hmm. would love a future where like 
I can lose in Scrabble to my mom mm -hmm. and feel like she's really uh -huh. there in front of me. Yeah. I miss hugging my mom. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to do that for your hands is probably the most important place to start. You have a rough version of that with controllers today. Um, I think that that'll get even more over time. We have this demo playing ping pong where you have a controller where as the digital ball hits the ping pong paddle, you feel it hit the as if it's hitting the ping pong paddle wherever it is. So you actually have a sense of like where it's it's hitting the the, the paddle. So I, I think that that was that was just a, a wild demo. So I think we'll get some of that. You know, I think like most science fiction, it's not this binary thing that you just like wake up one day and we're like, oh, we've realized all the dreams. But but I, I do think that these platforms are going to be the first time that I think that there's a realistic sense of presence in all the ways that that's special to people um, for most things that people want to do, which are not the most physical ones. And even some of the basic physical ones I think we'll get. But then there's a long tail of other stuff. I mean, smell is also really important for people. Yeah. Right? It's, I think it's disproportionately important for memories. That's not really a thing that I think in the next few years we're going to have in any of these devices. I mean, that's a very difficult and challenging thing on its own. That's fascinating. And it's clear that there is also an AR revolution waiting to happen in the future. Now, after seeing all these, which specialization would you pick? It's complicated. There is no doubt that software engineering, AI and ML, cybersecurity, AR, VR, they are all the future and they are deeply interconnected. And there is another problem. Ask yourself, what does every breakthrough that we discussed so far have in common? Problem solving. Blackwell is going to solve AI's computational problem. Willow is going to solve some unsolved problems. AI models are going to solve medicinal and other world problems. AR and VR is going to solve emotional problems. To work on these technologies as an engineering student, you need to train by working on real world problems and come up with different ways to solve them. This allowed SpaceX to catch rockets with chopsticks, saving millions of dollars. But again, most B.Tech courses do not allow students to solve real-world problems. They are limited to what has already been done way back and made it to the textbooks. Unless it's an advanced B.Tech program powered by Calvium. Top NAC a universities across India offer these advanced B.Tech programs powered by Calvium, where students can learn about the latest technologies. Here, students train practically, understand and solve real-world problems, this helps them to improve their skills and build this wonderful future world. Want to know more about this advanced B-Tech process? Watch this video.